Hey folks, it's Mark with Fire Mountain Outdoors. You know, I love the 10 millimeter cartridge and I love the EAA Witness pistols. I think they're one of the best values out there and they fit my hand and I have great reliability with them. They're, they're just my favorite as far as a handgun goes. Now, I love the 10 millimeter cartridge just because of the immense amount of power that's available with the 10, especially to guys like me that like to hand load. Uh, a lot of the factory loads are neutered down. You know, every firearm that you get from a manufacturer is a compromise, and this EAA Witness in 10 millimeter is no exception. Uh, they need to pick components that fit the best average fit. Now, for myself, I wanted to shoot a steady diet of full tilt, big, fast as I can go, hard hit and 10 millimeter ammo with that. If I wanted to shoot lesser ammo, I have a 9 millimeter that I can plink with all day. But if I'm going to go to the 10, I want to go big. Now, there are some shortcomings, and I got a hold of HenningsShootsGuns.com, and we got some cool upgrades that we're going to do to tailor this weapon to my particular needs for full tilt ammo. So stay tuned. So I got a hold of Henning Walgren over at HenningShoots.com. The cool thing about dealing with HenningShoots.com is, is uh, Henning is a competitive shooter. He lives and breathes and loves these particular weapons. And he also uh, serves the aftermarket and people like me. So he's got a great depth of knowledge and a lot of cool products that are, that are tested and tuned by him to, uh, to actually do what, what we're doing. So he's practicing what he preaches. I like doing that instead of dealing with a big box store if I can do that at all. So what I got from Henning, his recommendation, uh, he showed me his new guide rod. I just simply wanted to upgrade the spring, but because of the nature of the EAA witness and how the guide rod sits, he really suggested uh, uh, upgrading my guide rod. Um, and we'll go into detail on that a little bit. He also sent, a a very cool, a uh, uh, cool thing that uh, <laughs> that's just that's just wicked cool. This is the last resort guide rod. We're gonna go into that, and I also got uh, an 18 and a 20 pound spring set to so I can tune my particular weapon to my particular loads. So we're gonna go to the range right now, and I'm gonna shoot it stock with some of my full tilt reloads. And you can see the amount of recoil and the amount of hammering that the slide does when it comes back and contacts the frame. And uh, then after we get done, we're going to go shoot it and see if and do a side by side comparison and see if you can notice the difference. So our weapon is clear. I'm going to go ahead and line these marks up on the back of the slide. Take the slide out. And this guide rod and this spring are the main things that we're going to be changing today. Um, these, these packages also came with another spring and 
there was no description of what it was, and it took me a good little bit of, of uh, figuring to, and research to figure out that, hey, that's a heavy-duty firing pin spring that's also included. So I'm going to show you how to change that, too. Now, this guide rod, we're going to zoom in, and we're going to show you why Henning suggested that we change this in order to save my frame on my firearm. Hey, this is why we are changing this guide rod. And, uh, and I'm grateful that uh, Henning pointed this out to me. You see this little piece of metal right here? As this recoil spring stacks up on this guide rod, as the slide moves back and it compresses and hits the stop, once it, once it stops, then what actually takes the brunt of the force is just this little tab of metal right here. So this little guide rod, the factory guide rod, sits up in there and just rests up against that shelf. And so it is just a little tab of metal. That's all that, that's taken all of the force. Now, Henny has these really cool guide rods that have this machined cone. Instead of being flat like the factory one, they have this cone that is machined into the end of it here. And when we put this in here, that guide rod, the, the, that wedge, that cone, interfaces with all the circumference of this boss except for at the top. So that force is now spread out through all of this meat, all of this metal, instead of just on those little bitty tabs right there. So that's, that's why we are installing this, so that we don't beat the heck out of our frame. Because guess what? If you damage that, uh, I can't imagine getting a TIG welder down in there or fixing it. You're just going to end up buying a new frame and, and then therefore a new firearm. So if you're going to shoot a lot of heavy full tilt loads, uh, this is the way to go. So I'm going to show you how to change out this guide rod and the springs right now. Changing the guide rod and the spring is really stupid easy. You're going to take the guide rod out just like you would do any normal cleaning and we're going to set that aside. Now we're going to take this guide rod and we're going to select our spring and I'm going to go with the 20 pound spring. This is a Wolf. These are Wolf springs, a well-known best brand. This particular part number for my witness is a 49820. And we're going to slide that spring over the guide rod. There, that was stone cold simple. Now for the little bit more complicated part, that other spring that comes with that kit, guess what, that's a firing pin spring. So to change your firing pin spring, simply depress the firing pin with a punch or something, and then slide this little block out. Now, on my witness, that block would not come out because of manufacturing burr. So uh, I had to do a little bit of fitting in order to get this done. And then you're going to want to hold your thumb over, <laughs> over this as you pull that block out. Otherwise, you'll be looking all around your shop for the firing pin. So you take out your firing pin and your firing pin spring. Replace the firing pin into the spring. Now you're going to want to orient this. It has a flat side and then a notch. The flat side goes to the right and interfaces with little space in this plunger. Simply slide it back in there. You're going to have to press on that, that tab that's down on the inside. Use your, use your punch to depress the spring. and then reinstall the back cover. It's really easy peasy, just like that. That's all it takes to do that. So we're gonna put take this 20 pound spring, we're gonna go fire another uh, five rounds through it with the updated spring, and we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison and see what we think. So let's go do that now.
I, I, I perceived a felt difference there. We'll have to look at it in post, but I want to say that I felt less of a, of a hammer, less of a hit when that slid all the way rearward. Now, since we're here and we're talking about it, let's uh, take a look at a couple other cool things that uh, HenningShoots.com sells. One would be a buffer. And this buffer, they don't recommend for uh, carry use or hunting use, but what this does is it broadens the area that's going to get affected by shock. It's just kind of a, it's a consumable item, it's a wear item, uh, any extra shock is going to be absorbed by this instead of your frame. So we just installed that buffer. They come in a two-pack for a very nominal fee from huntingshoots.com. So you put that in there. If you're going to do a bunch of range time to protect your weapon, reinstall it, slides, assembles, just like normal, and, uh, and then, you, then you can shoot. But they don't recommend that for carry or uh, defensive or hunting purposes. One other thing I'm going to show you is the last resort guide rod. As you can see, it's got a spiky end on the end of it. We're going to stick that in there and I'm going to show you what this is for. It's something that you're either going to love and actually absolutely have to have, or you're going to think it's uh, it's superfluous. That's a, that's a big mountain hillbilly word, superfluous. Hey folks, this is Bob butting in. You know, Mark keeps referring to this as the last resort, but I assure you he does know it's called the last defense. It's probably my fault he keeps calling it the last resort because I kept referring it to it as the last resort off screen. Anyway, it's the last defense. Back to Mark. And because it does protrude a little bit, it's a little bit harder to get into firearm and I work a little bit to get it lined up and there it is and if you look at this you can see that it protrudes now I'm going to put this firearm together and I'll show you what it looks like so there it is a last resort that is a force multiplying sharp point for if we're out of ammo, I suppose. This, if you were out of ammo, last round locked back, now you have a protruding point. Da! Da! <laughs> and I'm not sure if I love it or if I think it's superfluous, but uh, by golly, we're going to try it out because uh, it's. It's a pointy, pokey thing. I like it. And we got to stab things with it. So uh, let's, uh, in fact, let's go do that now. So I had 16 rounds and I had 17 assailants. I didn't bring another magazine. And there I am. And George here is the last and final assailant. And all I have is my my pistol that is now empty and a last resort guide rod. So poor old George, uh, he's tested with the uh, Rambo knife. You can see that review right here. Uh, you know he's out to get me, and I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to stop him. Oh, 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 oh. it worked. Old George here. The last resort guide rod. I think I just became a fan. George doesn't like it. <laughs> All right. Uh, we can note that the last resort guide rod is uh, unfazed by that, unlike George. There you go, last resort guide rod. We tested it on George. We know that works. Uh, we're really going to torture test it here 
and I'm willing to subject my firearm to this because of the nature of that of that cone that comes around, I know that that is fully supported and I can transfer all my strength to that and not hurt my weapon. Now I'm not sure about the last uh, last resort rod, but we're going to try it. So I'm going to just Well, you found a good place to hang your weapon. Look at that. All right. On to the next. I think it's tougher than hell. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> you could use that for starting holes. <laughs> it's like a center punch. Well, folks, that was actually more fun than I anticipated. This review kind of turned into a lot of fun. Uh, hey, if you are looking for parts for any of your Tanfolio pistols or your EAA witnesses, make sure you go to uh, HenningShoots.com. I want to thank uh, Henning for giving me the time of day and actually talking to me and helping me identify with what, what I needed here. And... Uh, you know, I was going to take off this particular uh, sharp pokey device, the last resort guide rod, but, well, George convinced me that it's worthy. I think a, a fellow would be wise to make sure that he has a holster that securely goes over that and also to take great care when you're holstering your weapon so you don't stab yourself in the love handle or something with the sharp pokey thing. But, uh, yeah, make sure you go to HenningShoots.com for all your EAA witness needs. I really think that the, uh, the guide rod was a definite value improvement to my firearm and the spring rate. You know, if there is a downside to an increased spring rate, you got to be aware of it. The witnesses, because of the, the nature of the slide going inside the rail, they don't have as much surface area as a 1911 or as a Glock to grab. And so we do have a stiffer slide and we do have a stiffer spring now. So there is a little bit more work to retract the slide and we have a small surface area to work with. So that would be the only detriment that I can think of um, if, if your hands are slippery or bloody or muddy or, or whatever, that could be an issue. But other than that, I, it was a worthy upgrade. I, my felt perceived uh recoil was less i felt less hammer i i can go full tilt with my reloads and i don't have to worry about beating up my firearm i think that the spring addition was a definitely a worthy upgrade so hey i hope this video was uh, educational informative and entertaining and if it was and you liked it go ahead and go down here and give us a thumbs up and make sure you like and subscribe uh, go over to Facebook. If you're a Facebook guy, like us over at Facebook. You know, more numbers, more people, more exposure. That gets us more stuff with the manufacturers and we can do more reviews like this. So, thanks for watching. And remember, always be safe. You can't take back a bullet and you never want to wish that you could. Thanks for watching. Well, since since Bob's a Glock and a 1911 and a and a Zig Zauer fella, he thought, well, you know what? Now that you've done this to your firearm, I don't think you can grab it in a nasty situation. So we're gonna try that. So I'm gonna get my hands wet. I got some uh, some Dasani water, and we're gonna try wet-handed and see if I could still cycle this if I was wet. And I can. Stepping it up a notch. We're going to go with uh, peanut butter hands. Let's just say that I was uh, in the middle of a sandwich and I got either attacked by a bear or a some kind of crazed something. Um, can I cycle the weapon with the heavier spring? So uh, peanut butter hands. 
We're going to try it. Yeah, with some grip, I can do it. And uh, with the forward serrations, I can still definitely do it. <laughs> this this kind of reminds me of a Matt V. <laughs> 2099 video here. Uh, I got the peanut butter witness right there, 10 millimeter peanut butter witness, and I can still do what I need to do. And you know, I really needed to lube the weapon, and it's, this was like a two for one shot. And I've, I've done lubed my weapon with peanut oil, which has a very high burning point, and to get all snack. Mm -hmm. 